All right, so now we're going to go into component parts, and we're going to look at vision and perceptual organization and interpretation, and then the non-visual aspects of our our world and how we process the world around us. Um, as we've already been talking about, we mentioned the idea of transduction and um, how that is the um, uh, the transformation or the um, yeah the transformation of external environmental stimuli into um, <coughs> excuse me into uh, neural impulses and we have to have something that takes the raw data the raw information coming from our environment it, to interpret it or to translate it into the neural uh, uh, information or language of our neural system. And so in transduction, uh, essentially light waves are, at least in, from the visual perspective, light waves are, are converted into neural impulses by the retina and then are coded. Uh, and these impulses travel up the optic nerve into the brain cortexes, in, into the brain cortex where they are then interpreted, otherwise known as perception. So in organizing uh, the data, the sensory data, into a whole perception, we break it down into a component parts again, discriminating figure from ground. Uh, we organize the figure into meaningful form by following certain rules of grouping stimuli. And all of that is part of what we're just going to unpack here as we move along. But let's start with the most uh, uh, core component. Um, and the um, <clears throat> let me fill this out while I'm uh, doing it. So stimuli is translated into neural impulses, it just as a review. Okay. Um, now, the one thing that will uh, translate between two different areas of of senses is uh, visual and auditory. Uh, have one thing in common, and it really is that the uh, information coming into them comes by way of uh, waves um, that uh, are on the electromagnetic scale, um, and particularly when we electromagnetic let me get this down, um, scale, is we perceive or sense a very relatively small, um, thin slice of this broad spectrum that we refer to as electromagnetic uh, energy. Uh, and that's part of light waves. Now, when we talk about sound, we talk about what? Sound waves. And there are two key uh, concepts that are important to understand in terms of waves. The first one is uh, the idea of um, the wave uh, length of the wavelength first um, is one concept. The second concept is um, the wave amplitude. So not only length, you can look at this down here, and amplitude. And I'll put it in everyday language so you understand it because uh, you are processing stuff that you don't even really r probably realize. So when I draw a, a wave, and granted it may not be the greatest in the world, but it is about as close as I can get doing, using, this, um, using <laughs> this tablet, the wavelength goes from this point to this point. In other words, how much are they bunched together? That's the length of the wave itself, okay? From this point right here and down to the base point uh, is what we refer to as amplitude. So this is frequency. That's, that's usually the language of wavelength. How frequently do they occur? And this is amplitude. In other words, how deep, uh, how deep the the wave is, and and amplitude and frequency are the key components 
in understanding um, in understanding not only uh, um, light but also uh, in terms of sound both of those play a part <clears throat> for example the, the wavelength the frequency of these determines at least in terms of light determines the the hue uh, or of a color how deeply um, how deep to how light it might be uh, in terms of amplitude this has to do with intensity which also then translates to us as brightness bright and those two key components are part of what we refer to and 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 the wavelength and the amplitude will come up again when we talk about sound waves the same idea occurs in terms of how loud something is um, in terms of frequency and then uh, the timber of it in terms of amplitude which is a, a another example of that so um, so those are some key components now let's break down uh, the, the the diagram of the eye and I would encourage you to um, download this diagram and fill it out as we go along here so that you uh, can do the same yourself so essentially as light enters uh, and everything's moving in this direction as light enters it enters first of all passes through the um, cornea uh, which is the outer coating of the uh, eye a lot of times it can be scratched and you may have a sore eye because of something you've got under your uh, eyelid or whatever a scratched cornea is is uh, certainly painful and it can um, and it, it can heal just like most everything else in your eye is concerned once the the light passes through the cornea out here the next point of entry is uh, the pupil uh, which is this area and it's uh, constricted or uh, uh, it is constricted or uh, dilated by the uh, iris and so uh, the lens itself is here this is the iris it's a muscle oftentimes gives our eyes the colors that they do and like I said it uh, constricts um, or uh, uh, dilates depending on the the uh, light um, of the ambient lighting so that more light can be uh, allowed in or less light can be allowed in uh, this area right here is the lens and essentially the lens is uh, is with these muscles up here is either thinned or thickened so that the image itself can be focused on the back of uh, the retina and the retina is filled with a variety of photosensitive cells which we refer to as rods or cones now this uh, expansion of the lens is referred to as uh, let me see if I can bring this out here is accommodation that I that I uh, described to you when there is uh, a <laughs> um, there it is a commodation and essentially it thickens or thins the lens in order to have the image fall on the retina at the correct place and the uh, correct amount of focus um, the the uh, this is filled with uh, rods and cones that are that are sensing are photosensitive uh, to either uh, um, hues of white black black and white or color these are easy to remember simply because of um, uh, rods uh, uh, have to do with black and white I'm gonna run out of white space here and cones I've always remembered cones easily because cone starts with a C and that has to do with color 
so rods black and white cones color uh, the other component parts that we're talking about and looking at here is uh, the uh, the uh, fovea because it uh, the lens is focusing everything down to the fovea where um, we are processing the information of the light cells itself uh, down here is the blind spot uh, where the optic uh, nerve leaves the retina all of these cells congregate together um, into what we refer to as the optic nerve itself and uh, in a sense, one way to think about it is that the cells of the optic nerve kind of spread out around the surface of the of the uh, retina. And it, in a lot of ways, when you look at it, it, it's kind of backwards. You would expect it to have all the rods and cones, if you will, at the front, when in fact they are on the back side of it. And we'll look at that in a little bit more detail. But you should be able to... to uh, uh, you should be able to label uh, a, an eyeball like this, the pupil, the cornea, iris, lens, retina, fovea, optics, uh, optic nerve, and blind spot uh, relatively easily. A lot of times when we talk about people who have, um, are nearsighted or farsighted, this lens is part of the problem. It's focusing it either too short, and so the, the, um, the, the candle ends up being translated here, um, or it's too long and it's translated out here and it's f not focused on either direction. So this is nearsighted, this is farsighted, and e in either case that's what corrective lenses uh, allow us to um, do. A lot of times this doesn't, um, this doesn't, uh, is either uh, shaped inappropriately or even the eyeball itself is shaped um, more elongated or short, um, short in that regard, and that's what creates this uh, poor image.